I'm Reverend Aliyah Kemmler. Welcome to day 14 of A Good Enough Lent with Kate Voller and Jessica Ritchie. Today's reflection is called For the Exiles, and it is slightly adapted. There is a saint for almost everything. Fishermen, hairdressers, carpenters, ecologists, lost articles, and an obscure Italian teenager who stands in for all those who feel excluded. St. Rose was born in 13th century Italy and her astonishing career as a saint began at age three when she raised her aunt from the dead. When I was three, my parents were still calling me the beanbag because I mostly sat in the middle of the living room. I like to think I was resting up for everything that I might try later. By age seven, St. Rose decided to live an ascetic lifestyle, taking a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience in her parents' house, which I can't imagine looking at my own six-year-old child who's playing Minecraft even as we speak. But she was by all accounts a remarkable child. By the age of 10, she had almost died, been miraculously cured, and believed that she had been empowered by the Virgin Mary to preach on the streets and public squares. She earned a fearsome reputation as a prophet, and this I love, someone who could communicate with the birds. But the part of the story that rings through the ages is that she was desperate to join a religious order called the Poor Clares, which ironically she was too poor to join. She was expected to pay for her entrance with her dowry, and she had none. She loudly prophesied that the religious order who refused her would regret it after her death, which they did. Only a few short years later, she died at 17. She's now the patron saint of her hometown, Viterbo, Italy, and every year the town has a procession that honors her and the memory of people who don't fit in. She's known as the saint of exiles, wanderers, those who are refused hospitality by religious communities. Part of our identities as people of faith is found in community. We're not islands, but reliant on one another to remake us, to pull us toward God and to be a soft place to land. But even in religious community, we are not always wanted. Maybe our sexual identities leave us locked out a compromised immune system means we're less able to join in. Maybe mental illness keeps us in bed or a move for work pulls us away. Maybe someone in our family is incarcerated or our disabilities or those of our children cannot or will not be accommodated. There's a woman at Jessica's church who at 17 found out she was pregnant and decided to keep the baby, but the decision meant she was an outsider. She didn't fit in with her school friends anymore, and the local mom's group wasn't a welcoming place for her. She couldn't afford the fee to join it anyway. She raised her beautiful daughter mostly on her own, and then at 27 realized she wanted to make a space for teenage mothers so they wouldn't feel so alone. She launched a non-conventional mother's group at that church, and it now serves people in between traditional definitions. They offer practical tips, how to change a diaper, how to advocate for yourself, how to apply for financial assistance. And the group has grown to 32 parents who are paired with mentor mothers who walk them through pregnancy and labor and infancy. The very place that once made her feel like an outsider has become a welcome mat to others like her. So on the days when you're feeling particularly left out or forgotten, excluded or exiled. Let's remember the prophecy of St. Rose, you will miss me. We can take time to grieve the loss of not being welcomed and to remember that all of the community of faith is impoverished when our gifts and hopes are sent into exile. Just because we are not always wanted doesn't mean we don't belong. Also, if you can communicate with birds, please let me know. I have some questions about what a certain owl is saying. Mm -hmm.